Hi everybody, Chef Diane, another Kids Cook Along. Um, so great to see you, I'm happy you're here. Today we're making roadside sliders, so a great dish for any burger lover in your life. If that's dad for dad's day, that would be fantastic. Um, but roadside sliders are, they come from the East Coast and um, they originated uh, made with onions, ketchup, pickles, and a potato bun. But we're gonna make ours a little bit differently today because when we cook along, we make things the way that we like them. Um, so you get to pick your type of meat, your type of bun, your cheese if you like cheese, whatever kind of toppings that you like. But the basics of this burger that we're gonna make today is a recipe that you'll be able to make every time you make a burger. Some really great tips here. So um, let's go ahead and if you've cooked along with us before, you know that the first thing we're gonna do is hand wash. And today we are touching potentially hazardous foods, which means foods that have the um, possibility of giving you food poisoning if you don't handle them correctly. So we wanna make sure that we're really washing our hands well today. And then if you want to wear gloves when you're touching your ground meat, whatever type of ground meat that you are using, you can wear gloves or just hand wash really, really well afterwards. Hand washing really well means soap, uh, hot water, friction for 20 seconds, and a good rinse. So um, go ahead and get started with your hand washing and then we'll go ahead and look at our ingredients that we're making today. And while you're hand washing, I'm just gonna check in and see who is cooking along with us today. So I have Sedona cooking along, uh, wonderful, and Anya. So Sedona, I know today is using Beyond Beef um, meat today and I think that that's brilliant. I personally have not tasted or cooked with it and I'm very curious. Um, I wanted to ask you, does it come like a burger patty already made into a patty or do you have to form it yourself? So for example, I have ground beef here and it's I'm gonna have to form that into patties for my sliders. Um, so I'm curious to know if it's already pre-portioned uh, pre for you. Um, and Anya, are you using anything besides ground beef? Ground turkey would be great. Ground chicken would be wonderful. Um, there's a lot of different, I've seen chicken sliders before, just regular chicken, uh, grilled chicken breasts on sliders. So we're gonna have a lot of different varieties, variations of the way that we can make our roadside sliders today. Um, I'm gonna say hello to the Wolf family. I'm gonna say hello to um, the, Faye family and um, okay so Aaron answered my question you can buy it either way we bought it one pound ground okay that's wonderful hi Gabriella nice to see you um, let's go ahead and talk about what ingredients uh, I'm going to use in my <clears throat> roadside slider like I said I'm going to be using ground beef this is organic ground beef it's a pound 16 ounces we're going to make eight patties with the 16 ounces um, I also have two different things you can use for a bun. I got these little mini buns at Trader Joe's. Um, they have sesame seeds on top. Or you could use a big burger bun and cut it into halves or into quarters. If you couldn't find a mini bun, you could use Hawaiian rolls. Um, there's also plain slider buns that don't have sesame seeds on top that you can, that you can find. And these buns are great for a lot of fun things. You can make... Um, Salami sandwiches are popular in our house on the slider bun or pulled pork, um, a lot of different variations. Um, pickles, I couldn't find pickle chips, so I'm gonna be using pickle slices that I'm gonna cut the size to be the size of my buns and burger beet uh, meat. Some melted butter for your buns. Of course, this is really important, salt and pepper, and I'm using kosher salt today. So this is a good sprinkling salt, so I'll be able to get the whole diameter of the patty and fresh ground pepper, a little bit of cooking spray, olive oil spray, or just vegetable oil if you don't have a spray just to make your pan. And we're only gonna use a tiny little bit of it. And ketchup, and you can use organic ketchup. You can use, um, um, my daughter insists that I buy Heinz. That's her favorite ketchup and she thinks everything else tastes completely different. So that's it except if you wanna to do toppings. So I have a nice fresh beefsteak tomato that I'm gonna to use for a topping today and some um, mozzarella cheese that I'm gonna melt on top. And um, 
So most important, hand wash. Gloves if you like, and we're gonna form the patties. So like I said, this is a pound of meat that I have here. So I'm gonna turn it into eight patties that are all gonna be two ounces. You can use your hands to divide up the patty, or you can use a knife. I'm just gonna use my hands since I'm gonna have my gloves on. So um, the ground meat, if you're using beef, they suggest using 15% um, fat just because your burgers will be juicier. And, um, but if you're using ground turkey or ground chicken, of course, you'll just use whatever content is. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna just karate chop it in half. So there's two, and then I'm gonna karate chop those in half. Now I have four patties, and I need to turn them into eight patties. So each one of these is gonna get karate chopped in half as well. So now here I have about two ounces of beef. Really important when you're handling ground beef or any kind of ground meat, you don't wanna over portion it. You don't wanna squeeze it too much, or um, you don't wanna knead it like you would bread dough. It's really um, important just to kind of keep it loose. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just gently form this into a ball. And then I'm gonna take the ball in between my hands and gently just make it a disc. Now it's a funny shape. I can go through and just kind of work with shaping it into a round disc, but I still wanna make it thinner because that will help it cook a little bit more easily. So I'm just gonna start pressing it, pressing it gently. I'm not squeezing it, kneading it. And the goal here is to get this so it's bigger than your bun because proteins, when they are cooked, they start to shrink. So I don't know if you've ever noticed before when you make um, a burger, it'll start off one size and then it will shrink up. So you wanna make sure that you make it a little bit bigger than the diameter of your bun. And, and my bun's about two inches, so I'm gonna try to make this a three inch diameter. Also, I don't want the edges to be too thin. The thinner these are on the edge, and you can see I just poked that, so it was really super thin. The thinner it is, that more this is gonna burn or cook really quickly while the middle is still uh, raw. So, and a roadside slider is supposed to be cooked all the way through. So I'm starting from the inside of the burger and pressing out so I still have some nice thick um, edges and it's also pressing from the inside. See how I have like a little dimple in there now? When this starts to shrink, it's going to go flat. If I make this into a burger patty where I mound it in the top and I'm thin on the edges like this, then I'm going to, this is going to turn into a ball. So see here, I'm taking the edges, I'm pinching them and now I'm fat in the middle and thin on the edges, this is gonna shrink and turn into a little ball. So um, that's not something that you want with your ground meat either. Oh, hi, I'm gonna say um, hello to Adriana and I'm curious what type of meat are you using today? Because I know that you are plant-based. Um, so there's all different kinds of options we can do for plant-based and I'd love to hear about them. You could do a satay or a tofu or um, what have you. So as we're um, chatting about meat, you can start forming your patties. And remember, you don't wanna to touch anything. Keep your meat on a cutting board that you're gonna be able to sanitize afterwards, which means go into the dishwasher. It should go in the dishwasher um, instead of being hand washed. And remember, you don't wanna overhandle those, those patties. You want them to be about two ounces. And the, the reason why you want them to be small is so you can eat them in two or three bites. So here I've got my disc, I'm starting from the middle, I'm pressing the edges out as I start from the middle. And I'm not handling it too much. Important next step after I get my patties made, and I'm just gonna make four right now, I can come back to making more afterwards. After I make my patties, the next step is I am going to season them. Salt and pepper, like I said, you wanna make sure that you season the meat to get the best flavor. So here's my four patties. 
I'm just gonna start with four. Now that I've, I'm done handling my meat, I'm gonna take off my gloves. If you're not wearing gloves, just make sure you give yourself a good hand washing. And I'm gonna set up my pan. So I'm using a griddle. So a griddle's a flat pan and it has shallow sides, which makes it easy to get in there and turn and over whatever you're making. But if you don't have a griddle, you can use any kind of saute pan. You could use a grill pan. You could use, uh, my friend uh, Stephanie likes to use a cast iron skillet that gets really hot that way. Um, so you can use whatever um, type of pan you like. I have a second cutting board here that I'm gonna use to cut my pickles and my tomato. Never gonna put my raw food on my cutting board that had the, the ground meat on it. You can see that I'm really stressing that. Salt goes on the burger, snow cap, little snow cap. Not too much. I have probably about an eighth of a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna ground, grind some fresh ground pepper. And now you could start turning on your pan and getting that pan slightly warm. Should be medium to medium high. You don't want the burgers to burn on the outside before they finish cooking on the inside. I'm going to spray a little bit of cooking spray or just drizzle some, ol some olive oil on vegetable oil. You can Then you can roll it around your pan. I'm gonna turn my pan handle so I can hold on to my pan with my non-dominant left hand. And then I'm gonna take my slider and put it on my griddle. I flipped it over so the salt and pepper side is down because so now I'm gonna season the other side. Now these take about two to three minutes and I'll give you some tips on how you can tell if they're done. Now that I've put the salt side down, another salt, I used about this much salt to season my burgers, and I just distributed it evenly on each burger. So it's pretty uh, delicate little sprinkling, and then one crank of pepper for each one of these. As I have this cooking, and you might still be forming your burgers, that's okay. Um, and if for any reason we lose each other, I have the recipe posted on our cook along page so you can check out the recipe as well. As these are cooking, you can start your buns. Now, the original slider bun didn't have any kind of fat on it, it was just steamed. I like a little bit of a crispy toasty bun. So I'm gonna take a little bit of butter, give it a spread. This will just help it get nice and brown, golden brown. A little bit of butter. I'll do one more bun. This is about a half of a teaspoon total of butter on each bun. This is, off, this is called an offset spatula. It's great for spreading things. It's great for baking, putting icing on a cake. All right, so now you can see some of the juices are releasing from my burgers um, around the edges. I've got some bubbling going on and I have a slight brown edge. And the slight brown edge is gonna be the cue that tells me that I can have a little peek at what's going on on um, my slider. So I'm gonna hold my pan handle, take my spatula and use it to gently release it from the pan and then have a little peek. And I do have a nice brown uh, exterior on my bun, on my slider. Let me show you what that looks like. You can see here, I've got a little bit of golden brown color. Now, the sliders are meant to be cooked medium, medium well. So you might need to let yours sit on your cooking surface for um, as long as three minutes before you flip them. Um, I like my burgers a little bit pink in the middle, but the USDA recommends that ground beef get cooked through to 165 degrees. So we're looking for all the way through. 
Now that I'm brown, I'm going to do my slider flip. So when you're cooking uh, with a pan like this and you have a little bit of liquid on your pan, it's really important not to splash yourself. So I'm holding my spatula, and you could even get a spatula with a longer handle if that makes you feel more comfortable. Holding my pan, you could even have an oven mitt on your hand as you hold your pan. And then you're gonna get your spatula right underneath your meat, and you're gonna turn it away from you. So you're gonna take the spatula and turn it away from your body when you make your flip. That just keeps the splash going outwards instead of towards you. Um, so we're gonna take that, get the spatula nice and secured, and then do a flip turning away from you. How's everyone doing? Do they have browned patties? Now it's really tempting to squish your burger and make it a little bit burger, bigger on your pan, but that's another thing with um, any kind of ground meat, you wanna make sure you save all those juices so you have the juiciest, uh, yummiest burger. So don't resist that temptation to smash it down. I just gave mine a little pat just to make sure the bottom is connecting with the pan. And I'm just gonna check in and see, Adriana is going to use the ground Beyond Beef. Okay, great. So if you get a chance to fill me in on how long it's taking, um, and they're gonna make it for dinner. So uh, this is a great lunch, great dinner. Uh, my daughter would almost always rather have a little mini burger than a big hamburger patty. So we make, a, we make these burgers a lot in our house. Now that I'm flipped over, and that took about three minutes, then I can add my cheese, if you're adding cheese. So I have some sliced mozzarella cheese, and I'm gonna put a little bit on each patty. I might have to adjust the size of it, because I don't want it to be too overpowering. And I'm gonna leave one with no cheese at all, just in case everyone decides. So now you're gonna see how my patty went from being pretty substantially sized to shrinking. So that's just the proteins doing their thing. They, they, they are expanded before you cook it and then they contract and everything starts to get smaller and the juices start to flow. Again, I promised you I would tell you how to, how to know if these are done. So when you feel your hand, um, this, this part of your hand that's very fleshy feels like raw meat. And as meat starts to seize up or starts to cook and the proteins contract, it'll feel like you're making a muscle. So I took my finger to my thumb and I felt it and that felt like a, a little bit more firm than when my, my hand was open and I was not making a muscle. So as the proteins in meat cook, they'll start to get firmer like this. So this is what medium rare would feel like. This is what rare would feel like, medium rare. If you really squeeze and make a muscle with your, with your middle finger, that's what medium is gonna feel like. And then the last one, uh, the ring finger is what medium well feels like. So you can use the spatula to test and see how squishy your protein feels. So I'm feeling still a little bit squishy. I also have juices that are not clear. So once a protein is cooked through, the juices that come out will be clear with no color. Right now, one of my burgers has a little bit of red on top. So you can see here, I've got juices that are red. And a little bit, of, uh, little bit of sponginess as I feel it. But they're getting there, and I think it's just gonna be another minute. After I'm done with my patties, I'm going to uh, put them to one side of the pan, and I'm gonna do my buns. So, if, or if you wanted to, you could use a separate pan and do your buns. The way that original sliders are made is you just put the put the bun on top and let it steam along with the meat. But I, as I said, I like a little bit of a crispy, crunchy um, text, uh, consistency. So my sliders are cooked as perfectly as I would like them with a little bit of pink in the middle. You could just use a spatula to move 
some of the fats that were released from your burgers over to the side so you have it just kind of over on the edge. And then the butter side goes down just to make your buns a little bit toasty. Meanwhile, I want to, I'll come back to that, the, those burgers. Meanwhile, I wanna make my toppings. So again, we get to have uh, choices in how we want to make our sliders today. My choice is to use a dill pickle. And again, I got dill pickles that are sliced for sandwiches like this, so I'm just gonna take a couple of them and cut them into like a chip size. I've got, I've got square pickles that are gonna go on my sliders. And I'm gonna do some tomato slices. So, actually, that knife isn't sharp enough. So claw grip, holding onto my tomato, Thin as I can make these because, of course, my patties are tiny. I don't want to overwhelm them. So I have a nice thin slice of tomato. If you wanted to, you could cut the tomato in half first and then cut out the stem and make even smaller slices of tomato. Like this. This is a very ripe tomato. So here, here's a half a slice if it's too big, if your slices are too big for your patties. But mine look just fine. I'm gonna take my spatula, check out my bun. I've got a nice crispy golden color to it. And I also have a um, they're nice and soft now. Here we go, that's perfect. So let me get these burgers ready to, to turn in something that I'm gonna take a big bite of. Buns come off. Have an adult turn off the heat on your stove. Did everyone find the right kind of bun to make their patties? Are they using a modified bun like I suggested? You could take a hamburger bun and cut it in half. Trader Joe's usually has these little sliders. All right, so here's what I have going on so far. I've got my toppings. I haven't finished cutting them yet, but for, for now I have enough to make my first slider. I have my toasted buns. And I have my cooked sliders that have melted cheese on top. So I put that cheese on right when I flipped it for the first flip. And now I'm gonna build my bun. I just wanna make sure that I know which one's the bottom bun. So there goes my slider and cheese, my pickle, double up on that i like pickles and my ketchup's going to go on the top bun and there we go there's my perfect little bite of a slider i can't wait to dig in all right i'm just going to put this on a napkin and then i'm going to check in with you to see what you have going on on your slider did your beyond beef cook yet? Did you get the right kind of buns? Did you toast them? Are they all toasted? Are your um, toppings working out how you'd like them to? Any questions about what you could put on top? Let me know. I'm going to finish cooking my sliders. Um, I think my daughter's going to have one for lunch today. And um, then if you have any questions, you can always type in the comments at within a half an hour after you're done cooking. I'll always check in um, for the next half hour. Um, please show me your pictures. Show me how your creations turned out. This is what my little slider looks like. I'll get a little closer so you can see. I've got a layer of pickles. I've got cheese. I've got tomatoes. Um, Beyond Beef does not shrink as much, but they taste great. Okay, so you guys, Sedona's already finished her sliders. That's wonderful. I have an announcement to make. 
that this summer we will not be able to have a live cooking camp, but I promise you something really fun is on the way. Um, it's in the works and I'll be able to announce that later. But just because we're really trying to be safe with our protocol for um, uh, uh, sheltering, um, it, it's just too many, too close quarters for us to do a live cooking camp. But I'm gonna have uh, a really fun thing that we can do this summer that I'll announce next week. So thanks again for cooking along with me today. I can't wait to see you, um, how your uh, sliders turn out. So make sure you post a picture and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.